Hello fellow Spurtons and welcome to 2021, a year which has been not massively different to 2020 so far to be perfectly honest, but give it time. And by give it time, I mean basically get your alcohol stocks all the way up to the ceiling and brace yourself for the end of time because trust me, those four horsemen guys, they are saddling up right now. And frankly, if I do spot them riding over yonder hill, I'm going to throw back enough tequila to make my eyes spin in their sockets and then I'm going to go out there and I'm going to headbutt those motherfuckers straight back to hell or at the very least like puke all over their shoes or something that'll show them anyway apologies once again first show of the year and i've gone and done an intro that's got nothing to do with tech even though this is technically a weekly tech news show i mean the title does have the words tech and weekly in it so i guess that's something oh god my head hurts tech expert weekly Anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome to the first Techspert Weekly of 2021, the first of many. No doubt there'll be a fair few tech launches throughout the course of the next 12 months, most of them no doubt virtual, so once again I'll be sat here in my pants munching on crisps, watching it on a telly screen, instead of being at some luxurious event somewhere abroad with a free bar. <sighs> And even though we're only three short weeks into the new year, an awful lot of tech stuff has already happened. Uh, so let's just run through a sort of brief summary of some of the biggest headlines. Uh, so first up, Apple has announced a whole bunch of investment uh, to help out any minorities working in the tech industry, including the construction of a new center for developers in Detroit, thus proving that Apple isn't just a whole bunch of complete c LG looks like it's finally calling it quits for smartphones after losing money for 23 consecutive quarters. Uh, they've lost over £3 billion just in the last five years alone. So apparently a weird-ass T-shaped smartphone wasn't the crowning saviour that we all thought it might be. Uh, WhatsApp users, of course, have been flooding in droves to rival up message and app signal after WhatsApp announced updated T's and C's that would basically have them sharing all of your precious data with parent company Facebook, ruh -roh. Good old Marky Mark wants to delve really deep into your privates, so to speak. Wants to see all those weird sex things you've been seeing, that cute boy or girl in HR. Especially that thing about the half dozen gerbils and the family-sized jar of Marmite. Of course, WhatsApp have claimed complete innocence. They reckon, oh no, we're not doing anything bad, it's fine. They've actually pushed back the uh, date where this was due to go ahead from February to May the 15th. Now, to get people a bit more time to get accustomed to the idea or basically what they're hoping is that you'll forget that it's even going to happen. Uh, Samsung obviously launched its new S21 trio of smartphones with the Ultra model once again bagging the la -di da Ooh, look at me, Mr. Fancy Pants 100 times space zoom shenanigans. Plus, of course, all of the best features like that S Pen support. I haven't had a fondle of Samsung's ultra-sized beast just yet, so to speak, but I have fully reviewed the Samsung Galaxy S21. You can check out my review uh, live right now here on Techspert, my full camera review and a comparison with the S20 Fan Edition 5G, which launched last year as well to see how that Exynos 2100 really holds up. Uh, so far this month as well, Motorola has launched... Uh, hang on. What? They haven't launched anything? Uh, no, that seems, seems to be true. It looks like their first launch of 2021 is actually next week. Um, so they couldn't quite hold on a full month, but that's still pretty damn restrained for them. And there's also been lots of big news in the realms of SOC, systems on chips, as well. And I know, I know, once I start talking chipsets, I can already feel your loins are exploding with sheer joy and delight. But first up, Qualcomm's announced the Snapdragon 870, which is a premium platform designed to sit between the old 865 and 865 Plus and that fresh new Billy Big Bollocks Snapdragon 888. This uses the same Adreno 650 GPU as that 865 series and the same AI engine, and it basically supports the same camera and display features too, but it does boost the CPU grant. And you're likely to see it stuffed inside value flagship phones from the likes of Motorola, OnePlus, Oppo and Xiaomi in 2021. So for instance, I certainly wouldn't be surprised to see the likes of a OnePlus 9 coming with that Snapdragon 870 chipset, just to shave a little bit off the price tag. And then a OnePlus 9 Pro, which uses the Billy Big Bollocks Snapdragon 888 with a super premium performance and all of those snazzy next-gen features. But of course, not one to let Qualcomm have all the fun. MediaTek also decided to launch a couple of bits this week to keep us tech spuds busy as well. They unveiled the fresh new Dimensity 1100 chipset and 1200 chipset as well, which are affordable 5G efforts. They're both six nanometer chipsets and the 1200 is the slightly slightly beefcakier of the pair, boast an integrated 5G support for two SIMs at once. You've got an ultra-core ARM Cortex-A78 clocks it up to 3 gigahertz, and support for cameras at up to 200 megapixel resolution, as well as screens with up to 168 hertz refresh. 
Meanwhile, the new Dimensity 1100 can power a 108 megapixel camera and 144 hertz display, and it again boasts an integrated 5G modem just like the 1200. And both of these fresh MediaTek platforms also have a proper bit of game and grunt as well, with full support for ray tracing and all kinds of other posh graphical chicanery. Uh, plenty of OEMs have already given their support to the Dimensity 1100 and 1200, including Xiaomi, Vivo, Oppo, and Realme, all unsurprisingly on that list. And you can start expecting the Dimensity 1100 and 1200 uh, smartphones to start hitting market around the end of Q1, start of Q2, so basically springtime. And as a special treat for you fine folk, I'm bringing you what is possibly, but not certainly, a YouTube exclusive, a hands-on review with the MediaTek Dimensity 1200. So let's start with the design, and I've got to say, first impressions of the 1200, not great. It's quite rough on the fingertips, the hand feel, definitely not amazing. And yeah, the aesthetics aren't exactly great. I mean, it's just a knobbly square, isn't it? It's not particularly exciting. And size-wise, this six nanometer chip is a little bit smaller than a hula hoop. Nice and dinky, much better there. About a four out of five for the uh, for the size. Although bear in mind that Qualcomm's Snapdragon 888 is a five nanometer chipset. It's smaller again, so about the size roughly of an M&M. And that's a chocolate M&M, not a peanut M&M as well. So it will be better again than the 1200. So that's my hands-on review with the Dimensity 1200. I'll give it about a three out of five. Not bad, could do better MediaTek. Hopefully it'll be a lot better once it's actually stuffed inside of a smartphone. That's definitely more than enough tech news covered off anyway. Uh, so now it's time for the part of the show that I, for one, sure as shit, have not missed for the last three weeks. It's viewer comments. <laughs> viewer comments. <laughs> Now, first of all, I've got to say a massive thanks to everyone who left a festive comment on the Christmas episode uh, back here yeah, three weeks ago. Back in 2020 still. Ugh. I hope you all had a marvellous uh, festive season. Certainly sound like quite a lot of you had a great Christmas because basically there was alcohol involved. Where could you go wrong? And yes, lots and lots of prayers that 2021 sucks an awful lot less donkey dick compared with 2020, just less general suckage would be great. So let's crack on with the comments. And uh, Sean, first comment of 2021, sir, uh, says, can just imagine after you finished the last video, you collapsed pissed on the floor. <laughs> I mean, pretty close. I mean, basically take the word collapsed out of that sentence and you basically nailed it. I don't know, I think I probably managed to stay on my feet another three and a half minutes or something like that. Obviously I had to edit the video as well, or Jesus Christ, that was fun. Uh, Snipe Master Pro 11 says, please tell again how sh 2020 has been, I beg you. Uh, well, it started off pretty well, and then around sort of March time took a sharp nose dive. And the rest of the year is basically just a massive whiskey fueled hazy blur. I think occasionally I would stand in front of a camera in this very room and talk at it. Um, but yeah, that bit's all a bit... Um, that's pretty much my summary of the year, though I get the feeling your request for a recap may have been slightly sarcastic. Uh, next up, Potato as a Herb says, could you make a video of your favourite phones before 2020 ends? Um, I mean, to be honest, I've always found those YouTube best phones of whatever year uh, videos to be a bit pointless. I mean, they basically just end up being Apple and Samsung wankathons. And those ones where they basically round up a whole bunch of other YouTubers to talk about their favourite tech just ends up being one massive circle jerk. That's where I tend to stick to the best budget phones in a given sort of price band roundups instead because that segment of the market is busier than a free hand jobs convention and none of the other youtubers really seem to pay it any respect whatsoever if it's not shiny and ridiculously expensive they don't want anything to do with it unless they've been paid to review it basically but that all said if you were to stick my nads in a vice and say you had to choose your ultimate favorite premium smartphones of 2020 i'd go ahead and I'd say fine uh, sony xperia 5 mark ii and the oppo find x2 pro absolutely adore both of those blowers now that is some proper fap worthy tech uh, next up, Scargirl84 says, when my Huawei P20 packs up, what other Android phone could I buy which has such a fab camera? Yeah, it's a fantastic camera on that thing. Absolutely loved it. Just gorgeous shots every time. And what I love as well is the fact that Huawei smartphones before the P20 series, their cameras were hot garbage, man. They were just so inferior to Sony's, the Samsung's, all the rest of it. But that P20 series, that lofted them up to like the smartphone camera champions. It was like quaffing a fine 12-year-old single malt after years of just down and weather spoon Woo -woos. Now, if you want something like the P20 that can shoot great looking photos with minimal effort, then I highly recommend the Google Pixels. They're the best go-to ones for 
a simple point and shoot action definitely. If you want a bit more control over it all then Sony's Xperia 5 Mark II which I already mentioned fantastic uh, the photo pro mode and the cinema pro mode I get a lot of uh, mileage out of those that's for sure. Uh, next up Timberlay says fun fact Yuri Geller has just recently dropped a lawsuit against Nintendo because of Kadabra? What? Yuri Geller was suing Nintendo. Hang on, I've got to quickly Google this, even though I'm <laughs> already massively running out of time. Yeah, holy shit, there you go. Uh, Yuri Geller apologizes for Pokemon dispute and says it's up to Nintendo to bring Kadabra back. Well, so this was some old Pokemon card that Nintendo published like 20 years ago. And I guess this is supposed to be him. It's like a fox holding a spoon. That is random as, man. I'll tell you what, though. If Nintendo did a Pokemon card version of me, Uncle Spurt, you know, clutching a beer, pissed out of his mind, I'd take that as a compliment. You know, so they wouldn't sue them. Next up, James Smart says, Watching you do these videos reminded me of when I was my best mate's designated driver every weekend. Uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest, the minimum recommended consumption for watching Techspert Weekly is probably probably all of the booze that you have in your household. Maybe stop just short of like downing your hand sanitizer, that's about it. I do feel your pain though, I was a designated driver occasionally uh, up in, uh, in Newcastle uh, when I used to do uh, nights out in the town there as well. And yeah, being in a, in a Newquay bar or club, absolutely stone cold sober, oh god. It's like jumping into a volcano without your flame proof pants, definitely not recommended. Uh, next Rob says, have you thought of combining tech reviews with alcoholic beverage reviews? I think this may be the niche you need to create so to attain your final form. Oh, I've definitely 100% thought about it, sir. Um, it's certainly, if I, if I was to do a spin-off channel, Booze Spurt would be one of the first ones I would, uh, I would get around to if I actually had any time whatsoever. The problem is I don't know the lingo, the jargon to discuss uh, beers the way that those knobheads on Untapped do. Oh yes, yes, this is a highly attenuated brew with an effervescent finish and a creamy mouthfeel. I mean, frankly, my review method would be, can I still talk after downing 10 pints of it? And next, Charlie Farley says, have you tried Brewdog Mr. President? It's a canny pint. I have indeed, uh, because it's a Tesco special, so I've basically tried all of the beer in Tesco now during lockdown, just to try something a little bit different. See, Brewdog were in the news again this week. It's always something with them, isn't it? But apparently they were petitioning for the Glasgow International Airport to be renamed the Joe Biden International Airport, because apparently Trump occasionally flies into there when he comes over to do his bit of golfing shenanigans. And then people were quickly pointing out on Twitter that apparently Brewdog uh, beer is stocked in the Trump Hotel in Scotland. So it's kind of like, a, mm. I mean, who really cares if you can buy Brewdog beer in a Trump Hotel? The bit that caught my eye was the fact that a punk IPA cost you eight quid. They're eight pounds. I'm not even sure if that was for a pint or for a bottle. Either way, that's ridiculous. You can get a bloody bottle of beer in a London strip joint for less than that. So I've heard. Uh, Cologne Army says, how can you drink warm flat beer? Seriously, it's just wrong. Uh, yeah, perfectly understandable. I used to be a skeptic as well. I would only drink ice cold lager. That was my only tipple of choice. And then I realized that actually a lot of eels are kind of like seven, 8%, some of those dark stouts, 10%, and that kind of won over my skepticism. Although I've got to admit, when I get my beer deliveries in uh, for real eels and stuff like that, I do tend to put them in the fridge to get them cold. So I don't know if, if does anyone else do that or am I just fucking weird? I'm just fucking weird, aren't I? Fine. Uh, so on the subject of macro camera lenses and how they're basically about as much use as a kick in the conkers, we had a couple of comments in the last episode. Uh, three Largada? Sorry if I completely mucked up the pronunciation of that. It says, hey, I like taking pictures of bees on cold four man. And next up, G, G, Javi, G, G, I'll just put the name up on the screen. Sorry, I've got no idea how to say this. Uh, when I get the chance, I take pictures of insects. I don't take pictures of people. I mean, yeah, fair f mate. You know, creepy crawlies, a lot less judgmental than people. You know, crack open a bottle of whiskey two o'clock in the afternoon because you've had a tough day. Bloody spiders and houseflies aren't sitting there staring at you like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing with your life? And to be fair, some insects are proper cool as well, like stick insects. What are they all about? I mean, seriously, that's like people evolving to look like hedges. Uh, let's try and get back on the subject of tech. Uh, Mark Persinson uh, said, I saw yesterday in cash converters, Sony Xperia Mark 1 going for 300 quid. I'm going to get it when it opens. Yeah, 300 quid, I mean, that seems like good value. I, mean, I did have some issues with the original one. The camera tech was not quite there, unfortunately. The Mark 2 definitely resolved a lot of those issues, but still a very solid smartphone all around. Hope you're enjoying. Uh, really running out of time now, so I'll make it the last uh, couple. RGH Tech said, would you ever consider doing a Is It Worth It in 2021, where you look at phones you've reviewed in the past? Uh, yeah, I do try to do long-term reviews or like 
uh, six months, 12 months on from when I originally reviewed them, but see how they're holding up against fresh new rivals, see how the software updates are doing, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, of course, it all depends on how much time I have because there are so many new phones coming out at the moment. It's, uh, it's a bit of a rush job. Uh, Danny Boy says, fantastic mate, but please solve an argument we're having at work. What is your accent? Lots of exclamation marks. Uh, well, I'm originally from Sunderland, but I've been a Southern uh, softie for well over a decade now. So quite a lot of the, uh, the the rougher edges, shall we say, have been smoothed over a bit. Hope you won the argument. Uh, and finally, Afterlife says, do you think that I should buy the Realme X50 5G for Christmas? Um, well, as it's now almost the end of January, I'm guessing I'm a bit late on this one. I still really like the Realme X50 5G. It's a great smartphone. Although of course you can expect a flood of affordable 5G phones to start hitting uh, the UK in the next sort of couple of months so uh, if you've already got it then great if you haven't you might want to hold off and to be fair there are so many new budget phones that if you do hold off you'll find yourself permanently holding off because there's always something slightly better just around the corner I think my favorite budget 5G phone right now is still the Xiaomi Mi 10T like fantastic handset which I reviewed end of last year go check that out if you missed it and that's it for this week thank you so much to everyone who commented on the Christmas episode please do leave your comments down below and we'll try and smash through as many of those as possible next week going to try and get an episode on the go every week again from now on back into the habit as for next week well it looks like that Motorola smartphone launch I told you about uh, back at the start, start of the episode Tuesday the 26th we could be seeing some new Edge flagship phones so definitely stay tuned for more on that as always if you haven't already please do plug subscribe ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week cheers everyone love you